I love it when people take pictures of me in the glory. Because I do, I, I'm like, ooh, that's a good picture. My skin was glowing. And, oh, man, you look good in the glory. then, Because you're standing in the eyes of the Lord. And he, his eyes see and behold the beauty yeah. of who you are. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and get to the word of God. You guys got your Bibles tonight? Yes. Yeah. Good. We're going to use them. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5 is where we're going to start. We are in such a powerful year. Yes. I am so excited yes. about yes. this year. Yes. Yes. And I know you guys are excited about this year, yes. too. Yes. This is a year of faith. I, I didn't realize it was, uh, you know, it, it was so prophetic until actually tonight the Lord told me. This, this evening when I was preparing for the message, he said, this is 19. I'm like, yeah. He said, what is 19? I said, it's the number of faith. Right? Yeah. He said, you're in a faith year. Mm. This is the time to let your faith increase. Yeah. Add to your faith this year. And when you're adding to your faith, that means you're around faith-filled believers. Yeah. You're around things that induce faith, that, that produce faith, things that Grow faith. You don't want to be around faithless people in this year. Amen. Amen. If you're around them, it's because you're delivering them. Mm. You're helping them get delivered. Isn't you? Really. This year of faith is going to be a powerful year. One. Nine, it's one and nine. One is the beginning. Mm. It's the first number of all the numbers. And nine is the last oh. of all the single numbers. Wow. So some things are beginning and, and ending. Some things that maybe began some years ago are going to come to an end. For some of you, uh, the tumultuousness of difficulties and challenge, you'll find that stuff ceasing this year because your faith, because your faith, it's one of the greatest gifts and instrument that God has given us. And God has given to every man a measure of faith. Right. Yeah. The Bible says that. So none of us is faithless. We might not be utilizing the faith that we've been given, but all of us have been given a measure of faith. Yeah. God, has done, God did that because he knew what you could handle. Yes. He knew what you could steward. And as you steward your faith, it increases. That's the beautiful thing about faith. Faith is so necessary. Without it, you cannot even please God. There's no relationship between you and God if there's no faith. So you've got to have faith in order to even establish that relationship, that foundation that you and God must have. That's how precedented faith is. So yeah. one and nine, the beginning and the end, it's like the closing of a chapter. I know some of you are glad for this chapter to close. Ooh, yes. It's yes. like this is a chapter of my bad knees, my bad back. It's closing out. Yeah. New chapters are opening yes. for us. Amen. Yes, yes, yes. So First Corinthians, uh, Second Corinthians, chapter 5 is where we're going to start. And I'm going to start at verse 1. And read to verse 9. I'm reading to you out of the New King James Bible. And I got a brand new Bible, so yeah. some of the pages are still sticking together. The Lord said, open up the new Bible on the first day of the year. And I was like, oh, man, I like old Odie. She's all crusty and tore up, but she's good. So I'm reading to you out of my brand new Bible. I'm preaching out of Amen. it for the first time. So Amen. Amen. ain't no telling what God may do. Woo. Here it is, starting at verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house made not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed, having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. Mm -hmm. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, <coughs> that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has also given us the spirit 
as a guarantee. Money back guarantee. Mm. So we are always confident, knowing that while we are in, while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, yes, well pleased rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. And all the readers and hearers of the word say amen. 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 That is so, so good. I, I, it's so much. It's so much in this. I just want to just get run into it. But I believe God wants us to take our time and unfold it. There's a lot here. Paul starts this text out after he says in chapter four about the seen and the unseen world. He's talking about spiritual things. He said, "For we look not at the things which are seen." but at the things which are unseen. He's talking about faith before he even starts talking about faith. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> He's saying, we're yeah. looking not at the things which are seen because the things which are seen are temporal. Uh -huh. I'm looking at something that is going to pass away right now. Uh -huh. That's right. Mm -hmm. He said, so we look at the things which are not seen. Yes. What's not seen that is greater than what you can see? What's not seen that's greater than what you can see? All the blessings that await you. All the blessings, all the goodness of the Lord that await you. There are things that are not seen right now that are yours. Wow. Amen. Amen. There are things that are not seen right now. I mean, I would get excited about that if I was you. There are some things that are not seen right now physically that are yours. He said, when we look at the unseen reality of God, the things, not the things which are seen, because when you're looking at the things that you can see, those are the things that you know, and you won't believe God for what you can see. See, faith is about believing God for what I can't see, but knowing that it's mine because his word says so. Yeah. That's what the that's what faith is. Faith has evidence, and the evidence of faith is that it will show up. Yeah. Yes. So he said, don't get don't get twisted and messed up on this seen reality. This seen reality will mess you up. It will get you so anxious, so fearful, so upset that you can't even see beyond it. Yeah. Come on, come on. In order to see beyond the scene. You have to have faith. Because mm -hmm. faith paints a picture Jesus. of what's possible. Yes. <laughs> faith paints a picture of what's possible. Notice that in times that you have been walking with God, when God reveals something to you, he shows it to you in picture form, in word form. See, God can give you a word and it's a picture. Car. All y'all just saw a car. You just thought about your car and how it needs a car wash. Yeah. <laughs> yep, see? <laughs> right? God can say one word. We God gave us words because words are pictures. Yeah. I can say a person's name and you will you will instantly see a picture of it. Wow. If I said Trump, <laughs> you saw a, yeah, you saw a picture. I mean, you might have saw him. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, it's gonna be a good year. I mean, I, I can say his name, and you can you get an image of his face, because God gave us words, because words give us images, and images are are, are uh, although they're not seen in the natural, they're seen in your mind, in your mind's eye. Your mind has the ability to see. It has eyes that can see, and it's not seeing just what is seen. It's That's why you need faith to be able to see beyond what is seen. 
If you can only attain what you see, your world will be extremely small. Because yeah. right now, you can't see Europe, but you can get to Europe. Yeah. Come on. I can't see Jerusalem, but this year I'm going to Jerusalem. Yeah. I can't physically see it from here, but I can see it in here because God gave me a faith activation to be able to see what I can't physically see right up, in, up close and personal. That's the power of faith. So we have a relationship with God built upon an unseen reality, yet it's seen in our spirit. Come on. The reason why Paul says God gave us the spirit as a guarantee because it guarantees that you will have something greater than what you physically have right now. Yes. That's what he's yes. talking about. He starts, he starts out talking about faith in chapter 4. And then he just rolls on in there. He has this amazing way of words. He's talking to a people that's a little stiff-necked. Mm -hmm. A people that's a little immature. They was, they was once all excited about God, then they didn't get so excited, and then he had to come back a second time and wow. give them some more revelation and some more inspiration to get them revved up again so that they can believe God for more than what they can see. Yeah. He's talking to the church of Corinth. Mm -hmm. And so often, the people of God in our time is just like the church of Corinth, where we get excited about God for a season and don't let God come through on something. I just heard today that a young lady that I know was on fire for God, she said she don't believe in God anymore. What? All of that is just fake. I don't believe that stuff. This is a person that was on fire for God. How do you go from not believing, from totally believing God and telling the world about the Lord and then not, uh, in seasons later in your life, you're not believing God anymore? Wow. Because you never believed him in the first place. You only believe him for, for what you want. And then when you didn't get what you want, then you decided that he's not real. Right. That's not faith. Right. That's manipulation. Yeah. Faith says, I want what God has yes. for me. Yes, and and it's, it's not always what I want for myself. Mm -hmm. So in this text, let's look at the text. Paul starts out by saying, for we know that if our earthly house, he's talking about natural things. Mm -hmm. This is a faith conversation that Paul is having right here. Faith applications are being applied. He's talking about our earthly house that we get so in love with that we just want to be here. Some people want to be in earth forever, not me. I mean, you know, eventually this earthly house is going to get, you know, old. And I know there's people out there say, oh, you don't ever have to get old. But if that was true, then Moses wouldn't have gotten old. Neither would Abraham and the father of our faith. They were old. They, they wasn't uh, beat up and they could climb mountains, but they got old. Right. So Paul is letting us know that there is an assurance of the resurrection. This earthly house that you have, he says, this house, is uh, God has a better house for us. And what he's talking about is the physical body. He said, this physical body, God has something better. Mm -hmm. And what God has... Is so much better, it's eternal. Yes. Eternal means everlasting, won't wear out, right. won't get old. He says, and we are groaning earnestly, desiring to be closed with that habitation. The habitation that we have a, a desire, our spirit has a desire for that glorious body that was once in the garden. In the Garden of Eden, there was a glorious body that that body did not taste sickness, nor did it taste death until sin entered in. Right. Yep. So these guys were clothed with a habitation yes. that was infallible. Yes. Amen. And we are yearning for that. Yep. We yearn for it by faith, especially when you go through a health crisis and you know that there's a better body that awaits you. You're yeah. like, God, I want that glorious body. Yeah. Paul says we are earnestly groaning and desiring to be clothed with that habitation which is from heaven. Yes. He lets us know that that habitation, that that body is not like this earthly body that will get sick, that will break down at times if we don't take care of it, if we don't nurture it. And sometimes you are taking care of it. You are nurturing it. You are drinking water. It's Some things are environmental. We live in a right. fallen world right. with all kinds of environmental issues. And, you know, we have global warming right now where trees are dying at astronomical rates. Right. Yep. 
we went to uh, Grand Canyon, and on the way to Grand Canyon, we saw hundreds of trees that had literally died in the prime of a season. When they should have been flourishing, they were actually dying. And that's because of the environment and how the environment has been polluted. Our earthly temples, our, these houses, these bodies, they are affected by that. And so how we get through life, even with the effects of life happening to us, is by faith. I believe that even if this thing falls apart, God's got something better for me. Yes. Right, right. He says, indeed, having been clothed, that we shall not be found naked, for we who are in this body, in this tent, we are burdened. There it is right there. There are burdens that we endure. I, I, I can tell you this. Last year, my mother uh, was diagnosed with cancer twice in her body, not in her spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Not in her soul. Yeah. It was in her body she was diagnosed with cancer. That was a burden. And it wasn't a burden that she caused. It was a burden that was inflicted. Though I, I, when, pe when saints get sick, I don't always go back to sin. It's not always about sin. Some saints are sick because the enemy afflicts them. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them also. When a person goes, especially a saint, Especially one that is walking with the Lord. When people are walking with the Lord and all of a sudden they're afflicted and they're going through some challenges in life. I always look at the source, which is the enemy. Yeah. Afflicting that body. He can afflict that body because so often if, when you're walking by faith, he can't get to that spirit. Mm -hmm. Come on. That spirit is faith-filled. So even when the body is falling apart, the spirit is, yeah, but God. Yeah. yeah, The spirit is still believing God as a healer. The spirit, I watched it with my own mother. The spirit was still believing God. The spirit was quoting scriptures when the body was getting chemo. Right. I watched it with my own mother. I can tell you by experience, by going through this experience with one of the people I love the most in the world, that when you're going through something and your body is afflicted, when your spirit is faith-filled, your body will align to your faith. So she was burdened, as with so many of us. We're burdened in our bodies. Mm -hmm. Yet there is hope, because the hope is faith. And here's what Paul says. He says in verse 4, For we are, who are in this tent are being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing. Get that. That's a powerful word right there. He who has prepared us, he's prepared you for the burden. Come on, come on, come on. He's prepared you for the burden. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. You've been prepared for deliverance. Yes. He will deliver you. I don't care. It can be emotional burden. It can be depression, oppression, whatever it is. He has prepared you for a deliverance from that burden. Yes. He who has, I said, wait a minute, you prepared us? He said, yeah, I prepared you because your spirit knows that there is a much better body that awaits you. Mm -hmm. Spiritual and natural. Mm -hmm. Now, when you're in the natural body and the natural body is being afflicted, you've got to look spiritually at God because your spirit is greater than your body. Why? Your spirit is eternal. Your body is temporal. Right, yeah, yeah. So your spirit is greater than your body. That's why Paul says we look not at the things which are seen. I can see the affliction in my body. I'm looking at the things which are unseen. My spirit is greater than my body. How do I know? First John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's why Jesus, when he's going around healing, he would speak to somebody. He would say, your faith. Yes has made you whole. He was speaking to the unseen. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking to their faith, yeah. which is an unseen reality being made seen as a result of the body aligning itself to the word. Come on. Yes. The, he said your faith has made you whole. He's speaking to an unseen thing. He's speaking to an, un, an unseen word to a seen thing. Yeah. 
And that seen thing received that unseen thing and healing happened. So there is no circumstance that you can't get out of. No circumstance you can't get out of because when the unseen becomes seen, manifestation happens. And here's what the Bible said. You have been prepared for this. God prepared you for this. God prepared my mother for her deliverance. And because he prepared her, he gave her a word of faith to hold on to while he brings her into it. She was brought into it. She said, God had already given her a word. I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. God said, this sickness is not unto death. While we were crying, she said, I don't know what y'all crying about. I, I said, this sickness is not unto death. That's why when you're going through something, although people will prophesy to you and give you a word from the Lord, you've got to steal your heart and hear him for yourself also. Because when you hear it, it becomes real to you. Prophecy is a confirmation. The word spoken to you is a revelation. You got to hear God, baby. You got to hear God because he's prepared you for this. Whenever you're going through something, remember, you're in the year of faith. If you're in the year of faith, then that means God, something's going to come or you're going to have to have some. And you got to remember this little word right here. God has prepared me for this. I knew it was coming. Some of y'all will say next month, devil, I knew it was coming. And God has prepared me for it. I knew you was going to come with that one. But I'm already prepared for it because I got Faith. Come on. Yes. Already faith. Yes. I came into a year like, yes. oh, yeah. what, 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 what? Yes. <laughs> Ready. Ready. Uh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Verse 5. Somebody better write that down in their journal. Now, he who prepared me yes. for this very thing. Yes. When it shows up next month, shows up in April. Oh, he prepared me for this very thing. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have let me get that word, devil. You let me get him. You let me mess around and get to chapter five. Yeah. I got the five, five. <laughs> you shouldn't have let me get there. I know the truth now, and the truth makes me free. Yes. He said, he prepared, it's God. God did that. He's already, prepared means it's done. He didn't say he's preparing you. Prepared means it's a done deal. You're already clothed with strength. You're already girded with strength unto the battle. David said he has girded me with strength unto the battle. That means now I'm just waiting for it to come because I got the strength. I got the strength to fight now. He has girded me with strength for the battle. Not he's going to give me. He has already done it. I'm already girded. He has given me the strength to run against the truth and to leap over a wall. What? You can leap? You've been prepared for this very thing. You got to go home tomorrow and be like, to go to work tomorrow and be like, I'm prepared. I'm prepared for anything crazy y'all about to do up in here. I'm already prepared for this very thing. I expect something crazy to break out in 2019 because that's what, how my faith is going to increase. I need some faith increase us. Who has also, who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. Guaranteeing that you will get it. The guarantee is the Holy Spirit. God said, I'm going to make sure that you have the faith necessary to produce the miracle. Yes. And how I'm going to do that is I'm not going to entrust you alone by yourself. I am going to give you my spirit. I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. And what's going to happen then is my sons and my daughters will prophesy. My old men will see dreams. My young men will have visions. I'm going to pour out my spirit. On the day the spirit of God was poured out in the upper room, the saints of God was filled with and they began to do things they could never ever do. They start to move by faith because the spirit of God was poured out upon them and they was guaranteed to get it done. You have a guarantee tonight. You have a guarantee that you'll get to where you need to get to. You have a guarantee that the business will succeed. You have a guarantee that you're going to be made whole. You have a guarantee. I'm going to give you some points here just to show you what happens when you're going by the guarantee that God has given you by the spirit when the spirit of God is on a man it activates his faith yes now he has the ability at the, to be active in the process of what God is doing in his 
life. Amen. That's what activation is. God says we're going to be doing a series on faith. Come on. So get used to get get used to listening to us teach about faith. Yes. For the next month or so, we're going to be teaching about faith. And I was like, at first I didn't get it. Like, okay, why are we teaching about faith? God says because I want you to walk like that oh. without looking down. I want you to walk like that. Yeah, yeah. I, my mom had a prophetic word about this. Do you remember, Mom? It was so good. Anybody remember? One night we talked about this, this image and what that image means, what it spoke in your spirit. And my mom said it was... Uh, Faith is the balance between me and God. The balance between me and God. That's what faith balance. is. Faith is the balance between me and God. Faith balances me out. It keeps me from being way too topsy-turvy over here. Some people are so spiritual, they can't get nothing done in the natural. You try to get them something done in the natural, they just own their job and speaking in tongues, scaring people. Can't get nothing done naturally. And then some people are so carnal, they can't get nothing done spiritually. You ask them to pray and they be, God bless you. Uh, but, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not walk. No, 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 I need you to pray me through yeah, yeah. because they have no balance see we can't be so over here in the world and trying to win the world that we're not one uh -huh. Come on. Come on. Yeah. one Come on. Come on. One with God. Not yeah. Yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. one yeah. with God. Yes. And we can't be so topsy turvy over here that we can't function in our natural world. Paul says, I became all things to all people that I may win many. I had to live a balanced life. And Paul was a zealot. He was radical for God. Yeah. Yet he knew how to behave when he was in the presence of others that wasn't so radical. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. I had to learn that. I was so radical for God, I'd scare people. I be on my job laying hands on people, telling my boss, you're going to make me lay hands on you. My boss said, you're going to make me put like pizza block for you. <laughs> I, I mean, I had no balance. And what the Lord had to do was bring balance into my life so I could understand the anointing and how to walk in it without yeah. it taking over to the point where I have no control. Yeah. The, body said, the Bible says this, a man that controls his spirit can take a city. Yeah. Don't tell me you can't control your spirit. Right? They told me that one time in the church, and I said, no, I just can't control it. I mean, when the Holy Spirit come up on me, it's just uncontrollable. They said, okay, well, here, sign this pink slip right here that we got for you. Let's see how that works for you. I'm like, what? Yeah, God taught me balance. So now I'm not only poised, but I'm powerful. Come on. Yeah, amen. So you got to be poised. Uh -huh. Get powerful. Yeah. I can yeah. walk in a boardroom and people still get slain in the spirit, and uh -huh. I didn't even speak in tongues loud. I spoke in my spirit. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. That's faith. Uh -huh. yes. That's believing that what I'm carrying can yes. change a room without me even saying anything. Yes. Jesus will walk in a room and people would be thinking, and he would read their thoughts. Yeah. That's power. Yeah. Yes. That's power right there. God wants us to be that same. We have that same kind of God likeness where God wants us to be poised yet powerful. Yeah. Positioned and powerful, not losing our footing and getting too over, way over here or too much over here. There is a place in God where you can walk prophetically and powerfully and get it accomplished and win souls for the kingdom of God. Because in the end, it's about souls. Amen. Amen. So here's what Paul's saying. He said, we got that spirit. We got that thing. And God gave us that thing as a guarantee. See, the spirit secretes, here it is, it secretes an aroma that pleases God. That's why when they are, they that are in the spirit are pleasing unto God. It says that it's, it, it releases aroma of life and it pleases God. He gave us that because when he looks in, at you and you are uh, operating in the anointing and you're flowing in the spirit, God is looking at himself in a mirror. Mm. Oh, come on. Jesus. Come on. He's looking at himself. Paul says that in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. He says, we behold as in a mirror the glory of God, and, are go and we go from glory to glory, the face of God. We literally, when you are operating in your anointing and you're flowing in the spirit, God is looking at himself. Yeah. He's like, look at me. Look, that girl so much like me. I do, boy. Them angels can't even tell that it's not me. They think it's me. They holy, holy, holy. 
That's how powerful we are. But it takes faith to believe that. There are people that are listening right now, people that are sitting in here right now, doubting that because the enemy comes along and he, and he messes with your faith and telling you things that are not true. Amen. Like you're, you're not that good. You're not as good as he is or you can't do like that like she does. I can't sing like Kathy, but I can worship. Amen. Amen. Because worship is about the posture of the heart. <coughs> right. Some of us are called to be singers, but every one of us that love worship. the Lord can worship. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's right. That's so good. Yeah. That's that so, good. so true. Here it is. Paul says this. We are confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. What? You are confident? Knowing that in this body, I'm, I'm not with the Lord? What? I'm confident about not being in heaven? Paul says we are confident. And here's why. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Come on. Yes. So I could be confident that I'm not in my heavenly state because everything that I need, I get it by faith. Yes. See, I'm not walking about by what I think. I walk by what I know. Faith is a knowingness. It's knowing the word of God is true. Yes. It's knowing that everything that God speaks, he will bring it to pass. Faith is assurance, that knowing, that confidence. And here's what confidence is. Confidence is having a strong belief and having full assurance. Full assurance. I remember when the Lord gave me a job. I was so confident that I got the job that when I walked out, but right before I walked out, I said, when do I start? I just had that faith-filled moment. Work. I knew I hit it. I hit a home run. You know how sometimes you yeah. just know that you got it done? You know you took the test and you just feel confident like, I, got, I had them answers. I got that. Oh, yeah, I, I, I can feel it. Not only are you not just feeling it in a natural way, your spirit is celebrating like we did that. Yeah, yeah. That's your spirit celebrating what your what it knows what happened. Even though it might not see you might not see it at that very moment, your spirit knows when things are happening in the realm of the spirit. It's like, don't look right now. You got that done. I don't care what they say right now, what you're thinking, you got that done. That's your spirit giving you at that unctioning. That's what the Bible calls it, an unctioning, an assurity that it's done. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's why we follow we follow the spirit and not the flesh. Uh -huh. yeah. But Galatians chapter five says we walk in the spirit. When you're walking in the spirit, you're walking by faith because the spirit realm it, it it's it's an invisible world to the neck to the natural eye, and so you have to just trust that where I'm stepping is a good step. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. Where I'm going is a good place. Where God's got me at right now is good, even though it might not feel good. It is good because God is leading my life. When God is leading your life, wherever he takes you, it's good. Because Romans 8, 28 says, all things. And what? It works together for the good to them. To them that love God, not for the world. Stop telling the world, oh, it's going to all work for your good. If you don't love the Lord, it's not going to work for your good. It's working for your good because you love the Lord, meaning I trust him. I am always confident even when I don't feel it in my natural man, my spirit man. Paul says we are always confident. Yes. Yeah. We always have that full assurance that this is what God said and this is what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's like little kids. When th their parents tell them something, they believe it. Mm -hmm. And they don't have to see it right then and there, but they know Santa Claus is coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> and so on Christmas morning, they wake up confident. Yeah. They do. Look at kids. I mean, that's how we should wake up daily. Amen. Every day we should wake up confident knowing that God is a provider, okay. that he's going to give us the desires of our heart. He made a covenant promise that if we delight ourselves in him, uh -huh. yeah. he will give us the desires of our heart. That's a covenant promise. And Numbers 23, 19 says God is not a man that he would lie. He's the truth. Yes, he 
Yes. So Paul says we're always confident. We always have full assurance that God is going to do it. Confidence is being is being certain, having no uncertainties. You can tell when your faith is faltering, you start to be uncertain. Well, maybe. I think I'm like, yeah. Well, I don't know. The moment you say, well, I don't know, your, your faith starts to falter. And when faith starts to falter, the enemy starts to get louder. The moment you start to say, I don't know, he gets louder. When your faith, faith is faltering, get around people whose faith is increasing. Get around people that are actively pursuing God, actively reading the word of God. If your faith is faltering, start to read the word of God more. Amen. Amen. Read the word of God more. I know a lot of people will listen to music and they'll, you know, they'll worship, but the way to increase faith is faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Romans yeah. 10, 17. The more word you hear, the more you believe. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Some people don't believe because they know two scriptures. Mm -hmm. and, and when those two scriptures don't apply to that situation, their faith is gone. Yeah. You got to have more than two scriptures. Right. Well, my mama always said, well, what is God saying in this season? Because what mama said 40 years ago and what God is doing 40 years later could be two different things. Yeah. So you need an appropriate revelation for where you are, not for where you've been. Yeah. Right. Only yeah. religious people are still stuck in where they've been. Yeah. People that are moving with God because faith mm -hmm. moves. Faith yes, moves. Yes, the Bible says we go from faith to faith. Uh -huh. So faith is constantly ascending and growing yeah. and developing and increasing. Faith yeah. is moving. And if you're stuck in an old movement, uh, it's a, I love what T.D. Jake said. He said, that's a monument, not a movement. Uh, <laughs> if you're yeah. stuck in a monument, you are not having any faith movement. Mm -hmm. Come on. You got dead Come on. faith. Faith that says, I believe, but has no action behind it. Here's what the Lord said to me. Faith has steps. That's why he told us faith steps. Mm -hmm. Faith has action applied to it. That's what activated faith is. When your faith is activated, evidence shown up, show up. One, you become confident. When your faith is activated, you can gauge yourself. You don't have to have a prophet come to your home and tell you this. You can just, by, by fine-tuning your spirit and being attentive to spiritual things, things unseen, mm -hmm. you can begin to tell where you're at. Today, I was, I was, you know, having a day. I was not, something was trying to come up on my body, a little cold or something, and I was cold all day and just, you know, chilly, and, and my nose was running, and, and, and I could tell. I said, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, oh, Lord, you gave me a faith message. And now my body <coughs> is starting to falter. What's happening? He said, the enemy's coming after your faith. Come on. Oh, yeah. He's trying to shake your faith so that you don't talk yeah. about it. Mm -hmm. And if you do talk about it, you're not talking, talking about it confidently. Right, mm -hmm. right. You're not talking about it like as if you know it. When you're talking about something you're not confident about, it shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You, you can fake it if you want. But people with discernment can right. look beyond the fake smile. Right. They can look beyond the hallelujah and all of that stuff and see. I was talking to a person just recently and she was just talking about everything, you know, oh yeah, and praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. And I all, you know, all the little Christian jargon. And I, so I looked at her and I said, so how you really doing? And uh, she, oh, oh, I, I, you know, I'm fine. Really, I mean, you know, <coughs> God is good. I said, yes, he is. So how you really doing? And I just stayed right there, and, and I said, really, how, how you doing in your spirit? How's your soul faring right now? And, and as I'm talking about the soul, she starts to cry. Because her faith was faltering, and I could see it. Her, her words did not align with her life. If your words don't align with your life, there's a misalignment, and people know it. And God wants us to be so authentic that we're living a faith-filled life where our words match our lives. Right. Yeah. Where we're not, if you're saying, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe 10 times, you're not really believing. You're in mental ascension and not faith. You're just saying it. Faith penetrates, it starts in the spirit and it penetrates your soul and eventually shows up in your body. Mm -hmm. That's what faith does. Yeah. Right. 
and God gives you a measure of faith. So if you still have baby faith, know this, that if you believe God right here in the baby steps, uh -huh. you will increase in faith. But some people are trying to obtain mountaintop faith when they haven't even left the valley. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. What he was saying was I believed as a child. He said I reasoned as a child reason, meaning I had childlike faith. And that's okay because the more I walk with God, the more you walk with God, the more you read the word of God, the more you saturate your life with the things of God, the more your faith is going to increase. I don't expect baby Christians to be deep. I don't. That's why when we're praying and a baby Christian, somebody's newly saved in the first five years, they get the mic and they start praying and God and thank you for the tacos today at work and they were so good, Father. And you know, and I just and my cat helped my cat, Father. And you know, and I mean I you know, and they, you know, they don't they in the prayer and they don't say in Jesus' name. And you know, the other night when the kids was praying after prayer, I said, Come here, I got, got something to tell you, and they were all excited. And and I just said, Hey, you know what? The best way to seal your prayer so that it has that power is to say in Jesus' name after you pray. And they got all so excited. I said, So now how are you gonna finish that prayer? They was like, in Jesus' name. Yeah. I said, see, your faith just increased right there. Yeah. You just had a faith moment. Yeah. Yeah. But when they're babies, they're going to act like babies. Mm -hmm. We can expect that. Right. If you put an expectation on somebody that's a baby to be an adult, it's you that's deceived, not them. Right. 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 Yeah. So we expect that. Mm -hmm. But as we walk with God and our faith is more activated, it becomes more alive. Yeah. And the evidence of that shows up in our lives. Uh -huh. I love that now I can see my faith in action because I believe God. I started to believe God and grow with God. And the more I grew with God, the more of God I saw. Yes. Should I say that again? Yeah. The more I believe God, the more of God I saw. Right. Yeah. The more evidence I saw in my life that God was with me. I, I remember in my first couple of years of walking with God, I, I just would fall apart. You know, just one little thing. That's why in your early walk with God, you guys notice that when you first start walking with God, like he was answering all your prayer requests. Um, yes. I mean, I, God was everything. answering everything. I was so excited about being a Christian. I was telling everybody, you need to be saved because God will bless you. God gave me this. God did this. God said he healed this. I was just so excited. And then, and then things started to kind of, you know, slow up. I noticed about the third year, I wasn't getting everything. Then I went to the altar. I think God mad at me. <laughs> you guys did that? Yes. God's mad at me. I mean, he, he's not even talking to me. I can't even hear it no more. I'm not getting anything. He's growing your faith. Yeah. What he's doing is he's, he's removing some of the cushion so that you can experience some of the sharpening. Yeah. Yeah. You can experience. He's got, he's got to circumcise your heart and, and, and cut away. He don't pull out the knife right away. Because if he did, nobody would stay saved. Everybody would get saved and they wouldn't be saved next week. So he just, you know, you go through that wooing season, that honeymoon with God. And then God starts the, pro the, the process of circumcision. And it's to actually be designed to teach you how to handle the burden. <clears throat> so when the burden comes, you're not overwhelmed. You're not overly burdened. You can deal with the burden. Paul says we are confident. Mm -hmm. We are confident, fully assured, knowing that while we're in this body, I'm in this body, but this body ain't in me. Come on. I got something greater than this body. That's my spirit. He says, for we walk by faith. That means we live by what God has said. We live by what God has said. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. As we increase and our faith is more activated, we believe God for bigger things. We're not, I'm no longer believing God just for a house or a car, not because I have one, but because there's so much more. I'm believing God for supernatural things, yeah, healing. Yeah, yeah, now yeah, I'm yeah, believing yeah, God yeah, to raise yeah, the dead. Yeah, I mean, really, I just yeah. want to be at a funeral and be waking down. And then it just pop up. Everybody <laughs> run out the, out the funeral home, and I'll be like, where y'all want? Y'all wanted a miracle? Where's your faith? <laughs> so he says, we walk by faith and not by sight. And here it, he said again.
if, yes, we are confident, mm -hmm. fully assured. Here's what confidence is. Confidence is a boldness that, not an arrogance, not an aggressiveness, but it's a boldness and assertiveness. I, when I, after I got saved and I started walking with the Lord and I, I started learning the scriptures and learning the address, God taught me the address of the scriptures, a confidence came on me because I was assured of what he said. Mm -hmm. And then I, I would have people say, oh, she's so, she's so aggressive. And one day my mentor said, no, she's not aggressive, she's assertive. Mm -hmm. I said, you better say that. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> she said, she's assertive. There was a boldness that came upon me because I was sure of what God had said. Mm -hmm. That's what confidence is. So when your faith is activated, and that's what God is saying, this year, as you go through this year, you're going to need faith that has action. Yes. You're going to need to take some faith steps. And when God is saying at the beginning of the year, faith steps, right. he's telling you to step out and do something that you are uncomfortable doing. Yeah. He's saying, just take a step of faith. It didn't have to, he, he's not yeah. telling you to even take a leap right now. He says, faith comes in different measures. There is a step of faith, meaning, okay, step means I just move from here to here. Then there's a leap of faith where you jump and take, you take a bigger plunge because now I can, I, I stepped into something and that step was, gave me an assurance that I could do more. Yeah. So now you can take, take a leap of faith. Uh-huh. God says some people have, here's what he showed me. When people are walking in the mall and they have their little babies, you know, the little two-year-old, the little legs about this long, and, and the grown folks just walking just, and the baby way over there, come on, you, you're walking too slow. And the poor baby, and then they grab the baby by the hand, and the baby little legs can't even go so right. fast. So literally they're dragging the baby. And you're looking like, slow down. Yeah. The baby can't walk with you because your legs are longer. longer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? God knows in your infantile season, uh -huh. your legs wasn't as long as his legs, yeah. so he let you take smaller steps. Yeah. And what's so amazing about God is when you walk with God, we walk by faith and not by sight. Yeah. God is not walking so far ahead of us that his long legs have surpassed us. He's walking with us. Yeah. 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 That's why the summit said he walks with me. So, so he's walking with you and he's walking, he's setting the pace. He's not letting you lag because sometimes you'll, you'll start lagging and you say, I'm in, I'm in faith. No, you're in delaying. You're not faithing mm, it. Wow. You're delaying it. You're just delaying because you're uncertain. Mm. Faith is certain. Being sure. God will walk with us and, and then he'll pick up the pace. He'll go a little bit faster and a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And before you know it, your legs are taking bigger strides mm -hmm. in faith. Now I'm believing God for something I would have never believed God for. Right. I would have never believed God to stand up in front of a crowd on media and began to preach the word. I remember when they first said, let's go live on Facebook. I was like, no, I mean, I don't know that. I mean, I got I to gotta make sure my makeup done right. And when we first started on media, I had my makeup all right, made sure my hair was. Now I just brush these little sides down, put a little gel on it, come on up in here because I'm walking by faith and not by sight. <laughs> Baby, I will take these shoes off and my feet ain't even done. Because I walk by faith and not by sight. But I was worried. When you're walking by sight, you're walking in word. You're worried about what you see. Yeah. But when you're walking about faith, you're believing what you can't see, but what you know. Because faith is a knowingness, it's that yeah. surety, it's yeah. the confidence of God. Yeah. When you get confident at this level, you just pick up the mic and trust that what God wants to say, He will say it. Amen. He don't uh, faith doesn't always paint the whole picture for you. Faith will give you a word. I mean, did you get the whole picture of your healing in the beginning? You got a word, and that word was a word of faith, and that word brought you into the full manifestation of your healing. So God don't always give you the whole picture. He give you a partial picture and said, walk with me. Well, what? Yeah, you're going to have to take a step. Trust that what the, 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 the little bit I gave you, that's enough. Because as you walk with me, I'm going to put the puzzle together for you. Uh -huh. yeah. 
So by the time you get to where you need to get to, you can say, oh, yeah, I knew it. Mm -hmm. I knew it. I saw it in my spirit. I didn't see it all, but I, I could feel it all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Faith activated. The Lord says, activate your faith. Here's what acti activate your faith means. It means to make your faith alive so that it's producing tangible realities. That's what activated faith is. We've all seen believers that love the Lord but have never ever believed the Lord beyond what they know. There was a guy years ago. We were going to Dunamis and Dunamis was, it's just such a powerful prophetic house. We grew so much in faith while we were with uh, Dennis Walker and Lenny Walker and their staff because they were, they were flowing in the prophetic and we had never flowed in the prophetic to that degree. So we got around people that were flowing in the prophetic and even though we had a prophetic anointing, it had not been activated to the level that it got activated while we were at Dunamis. Mm -hmm. and, and so one time a guy said, uh, only religious people want to hear what they already know. Because mm -hmm. they live in a monument and not a movement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's like they're stuck in the Dead Sea remembering what was. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Only a religious person want to hear what they already know. I don't want to know. I don't want to continually hear what I already right. know. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Every time I hear the word of God, a new revelation comes yes. when I'm open for the impartation. Yes. Yes. You got to be open for the impartation. That's why you don't want to be around people that's always saying the same old thing. You remember when we used to? Right. I have a friend that's always bringing up my past. Kim, you remember when you left me at the restaurant? Okay, I left you at the restaurant. I repented. You walked home. I said I was sorry. It was 12 years ago. Why are we still talking about it? But the Lord, he done brought you from a mighty long way. So why you got to bring up that all the time? You still stuck in the old. Faith has moved me into another place. I'm not even the same woman that cussed you out at the restaurant. Right? People will keep you in a monument when you're in a movement. They will keep you stagnant and stuck in the Dead Sea when God wants you to flow in the rivers of life. Amen. So faith. Somebody say, activate my faith. Activate my faith. That means you making your faith come alive. Yes. And it's you, it's you that's going to uh, yes. cause that impartation to happen. Here's what happens when your faith is made alive, when your faith is activated, when your faith is functioning. That's what it means. Your faith is functioning. Here's what, it, here's, I want to give you seven things. This is what the Lord gave me, and I'm going to give it to you. So as you are walking through these seasons and sessions of this year, your faith is increasing even in the storms. Because yes. the rain's going to come this year, too. Come on. Yeah. Right. Come on. The winds are going to blow this year. Yes, they will. And some of you know how it gets in the desert. It blows something. Some of y'all little houses down. Yeah, it's going to blow. There's going to be storms, but there also is going to be lots of sun. Yeah. 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 Yep. And lots of joy. Yeah. And all of it. Here's what it said. We have been prepared for this. Yeah. So in this season of faith, God says, activate your faith. And when your faith is activated, there is boldness. Boldness yes. is seen when your faith is activated. Is that number one? Number one, yes. Thank you. Proverbs 28, 1. I want somebody to get Proverbs 28, 1. Who's going to get that one? Okay. And I want somebody to get 2 Timothy 112. We're going to have some interaction. Who's going to get 2 Timothy 112? All right. Monica, you got it. Kathy, you got uh, Proverbs 28 1. Okay, hold that. I want somebody to get Deuteronomy 316. Who's got Deuteronomy 316? Okay. All right. Aaliyah's got it. All right. I want somebody to get Isaiah 40 31. Who's got Isaiah 40 31? Susan's got it. Okay. I want somebody to get Hebrews 11 1. Who's got Hebrews 11 1? You got it, Kim? Yep. I want somebody to get Isaiah 58, 11. Who's got that? And you get Isaiah 58, 11. Shanoa, get 1 Corinthians 15, 58. And mom, I'm going to have you come up at the end and read 2 Peter 1, 
three through eight. Hebrews uh, 11 and 1. All right, we all got our scriptures? Yes. Okay, so the first sign of faith being activated is boldness. Who's gonna, Kathy, read that out loud for us. The wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion. The righteous is as bold as a lion. Boldness is a sign of activated faith. Yeah. Boldness was one of the first characteristics of the Holy Spirit in part of uh, when the, uh, and the, and the believers after Jesus ascended to heaven. The followers of Jesus had been hiding in fear of the Jewish authority, praying and encouraging one another. Then the Holy Spirit came upon them and those formerly terrified disciples mm -hmm. became fearless right. preachers. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Boldness is what they prayed when Peter was in jail, Acts 4.29. The disciples prayed with all boldness uh -huh. and said, so boldness is a characteristic that displays your faith has been activated. Yeah. When you can go to someone and you can speak boldly and confidently without shrinking back and diminishing what God is saying. Boldness is what is needed in this dispensation of time because people lie to each other just to keep a friend. If I have to lie of you to be your friend, then we're not friends. That's right. Yeah. And boldness does not mean aggression. It means that confidence of assertion that is required to maintain right relationships with one another. The righteous is as bold as a lion. We have to speak bold the gospel of God. Right. Paul said, I, I pray that an unctioning be given unto me that I would open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the kingdom of God. I heard Chuck Pierce pray that. Every time he gets ready to preach, he prays that scripture in Ephesians chapter 1. He says, I pray that an utterance be, would be given unto me, that I would open my mouth boldly to make known the mysteries of the gospel of God. And when he said that, I thought, man, every preacher, every believer ought to pray that before you go and open your mouth. Like an utterance be given unto me. She looking like, where, where is that at? <laughs> yeah, that an utterance. He prays that all the time that an utterance be given unto me, that I would open my mouth boldly. Because when we're talking about the Lord, you can talk about God in public, but the moment you mention the day, yeah. oh, you can talk about God. Because there's many a God, but you mention Jesus. Oh, she's religious. No, no, I'm not. This, uh, people say, oh, are you religious? I say, oh, no. They go, oh, well, you know, you were talking about Jesus. I said, oh, well, because I'm relational. That throws them off. Yeah. Then they go, what do you mean? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> that becomes a teaching yes. moment right there. So boldness, it's a characteristic of faith. And it's the evidence that you are operating in faith. If you're afraid to say something that God put on your heart, then you're not in fear. You're not in faith, you're in fear. Mm -hmm. If God put it on your heart, you have to say it. And he makes our mouth seasoned with salt, so we say it in a way that it's appropriate. Yes. If you're just screaming it out like, I just had to tell you out because, you know, I mean, I just, that's how I am. That's not how you are. If you be in Christ, you are a new creation. Old things have passed away. Yeah. You know, you don't cuss people out no more. No. Nope. You don't give people a skank eye. None of that. The Lord had me to put this on my vision board this year. He said, I want you to help more people. I said, what? I mean, I, you know, I already help a lot of people, Lord. He said, no, I want you to help people without complaining. I said, what? I mean, I don't complain. He said, yeah, you do it in your heart. He'd be like, I didn't believe they called me. I mean, they got a pastor. He said, I had them to call you because apparently their pastor is not doing what I've created you to do so I had them to call you and don't complain about it don't pop your neck don't go start thinking all kind of crazy stuff in your head just do what I asked you to do I want you to help more people he said I want you to start breakthrough again it's so amazing that you two are back there because we were just talking about you two last night and how you're incredible breakthrough mentors and how you know how to just wield that sword right where it needs to be wielded so we're starting another breakthrough group next month because the Lord said I want you to do that because my people need need help. Yeah. Yeah. Breakthrough is a process of going through the of dealing with the truth. Did we not just talk about we them did. last night? Yeah. We just prayed y'all yeah. in last night. We called y'all names out to the angels. I said go get them. The angels like come on. Yeah. 
sure. Just talked about you guys, and we talked about breakthrough. So that's a way, that's one of the faith uh, assignments that God gave me. He says, we need faith partners. What do you mean? People that walk with you in faith. That walk with you in faith. And when they see that your faith is a little shaky, they'll say, hey, 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 time to rev it up. When's the last time you read some word? When's the last time you spent some time alone with God? And not and not say it offensively, but say it powerfully right. and boldly. Yeah. That's what boldness is. It's people speaking the truth in love. Mm -hmm. But it has impact. Have you ever talked to somebody and they say, yeah, 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 I know, uh-huh, I know, I know, and then they walk away and you felt like you didn't say anything? Right. Mm -hmm. Because you were saying it passively rather than with confidence. When you're speaking with confidence, it's like when E.F. Hutton, they said when E.F. Hutton talks, everybody listens. Oh, the young people don't know who E.F. Hutton Thank is. God. That was from like the 70s, right? The young people are looking at me like, uh, what are we talking about, Pastor? <laughs> Okay, the second one is when faith is activated, there is, you are convinced. Paul says in Romans 8.38, he said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor things present nor things to come nor heights nor death nor any other living thing shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. He said, I am persuaded. I'm convinced. You can't unconvince me. You can't talk me out of Jesus. No, no, no. I mean, there, there are some people that are so convinced by their walk with God that you can't talk them out of it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, there are so people, some people, there you go, that are so convinced that you can't talk them out of Jesus. You can't talk me out of the church. I'm not going to get mad and walk away. Uh-uh, when I heard that young woman say that there is no God, she don't even believe in God anymore, that's all Farsi, I, I thought, how could you be, you was never convinced. Because once you're really convinced, nobody can talk you out of it. Amen. I just can't believe, I, can, I, I don't ever see my mom going, oh, well, you know, I'm still hey, kind of worried right. about this whole God thing. Right. She thoroughly convinced. Thoroughly, yeah. Thoroughly. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, some people are like, I, I don't walk too far now. Ain't no point in me turning around. Uh -uh. I'm too close to heaven. Amen. When I'm going to turn around, I'm convinced. Amen. And that's how this generation has to be. They have to be convinced. Yeah. They're not convinced because there's so many stimuli. You got Facebook, you got Snapchat, you got Instagram, you got Twitter, you got all of these stimuli that are releasing conflicting messages so they're not convinced of even who they are. They're not convinced of their sexuality. Mm -hmm. I'm a girl one day, I'm a boy one day. Right? Ooh, come on. right? Mm -hmm. But when you're convinced, I understand, I'm a woman. Yeah. I'm a woman. Yeah. <laughs> Hear me roar? Oh, <laughs> right, convinced. I'm convinced of my walk with God because I walk by faith and not by sight. I don't care what it looks like. Right. I know in a day it can change. Yeah. I've been in situations where I was broke and two days later I had $5,000. Yeah. yeah. So I, I know instantaneously it can change. And that's why Paul said I'm convinced. Yeah. The, my, my friends, the Pharisees that I used to run with, they can't unconvince me. Mm -hmm. right. Who has 2 Timothy 1, 12? All right, what does that say, Monica? It says, for the which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. There you go. There it is again. Paul says, I'm convinced, Timothy, that whatever I give God, he'll keep it. He'll keep it. He won't lose it. If I give God my heart, he ain't going to lose my heart. If I give God my he's not going to lose it. Paul said, I'm convinced about my relationship with the Lord. That's what he was saying. Yes. The third one is, when faith is activated, you're courageous. Deuteronomy 3.16. Who's got that one? Who has Deuteronomy 3.16? All right. Let us have it, Aaliyah. And to the Deuteronomy 
Deuteronomy, yeah, 316. Be strong and courageous. Yeah, go to Joshua 1 9. I think I missed 316. Yeah, go to Joshua 1 9. Thank you, Aaliyah. And while she's going there, I'm going to. Have I not, go ahead. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for mm -hmm. the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. There you go. As Joshua was taking the Israelites into the promise of God, he said, You need courage. And courage means I'm walking by faith. I believe God, so I'm not fearful. I'm not overwhelmed. You believe God. When you believe God, you're not overwhelmed. You're not fearful. Amen. You're not walking around scared about what's going to happen next. Yeah. Courage is a sign of faith. Yeah. Here's what David told his son uh, Solomon in, in 1 Chronicles chapter 28, verse 20. And David said to his son Solomon, be strong and of good courage and do it. Do not fear, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, my God, will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you until you have finished all the work of the service of the house of the Lord. Amen. David was telling his son, be faithful. Because God's not going to leave you. Because he's giving you an assignment. And he is not going to leave that assignment undone. So be faithful. Be strong and courageous. Knowing that God has he, he has gone before you. And he is with you. And he didn't say just the Lord God. He said, he made a, 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 a comment. He said, my God. So he was letting Solomon know he's my God too. He's not just a God. He's my God. And that means he got me through all of this. I can trust God because I've watched what has happened to my forefathers. I've watched what the Lord has done for my mother. I've watched what the Lord has done for my grandmother. And I, now I can, they can tell me, be strong in the Lord be, and in the power of his might. Be strong and courageous, Kim. And, and I can believe their testimony because I watch their strength. I watch their courage. I watch their faith. See, when we're walking by faith, others are watching our walk. Yeah, yeah. And so if you want your children to walk by faith, don't fall apart every time a bill come in. Because <laughs> they're not going to believe you. Children don't believe just what we say. They believe what we do. My mother, can, my mother has convinced me by her walk that faith is real. That God will do it. By her own walk, I'm, I'm convinced. Number four. Deuteronomy 31.6. Deuteronomy 31.6, thank you. Oh, I had the dots in the wrong place. Thank you. Number four, hopeful. When faith is activated, there is hope. There is hope. And hope is a feeling that what you believe will happen. Who's got Isaiah 40, 31? Isaiah. All right, let's hear that, Susan. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. There you go. Those who hope is in the Lord, yeah. they will renew their strength. Faith renews us. That's why faith is a daily thing. It's not season to season or year to year. It's, it's a daily thing. Daily, he loads us up with benefits. That's what the Bible says. And because he's loading me up with benefits, I've got to have the, the faith to receive that which he's given me. He's loading me up with it. If God loads you up with something and you don't have the faith to receive it, you'll drive off empty. It's like when your car is being loaded up with groceries at the grocery store. If you don't receive the groceries, they in the cart and you drive home with an empty car. God daily loads us up with benefits. That's a package, a heavenly package where healing is in it, peace is in it, prosperity is in it. The, your seed, seed, seed unto a thousand generations is in the benefit. Who wouldn't want to serve a God like that? Right. I'll tell you what, MGM can't give you that kind of package. No. All right. Hebrews 11 and 1. Who's got that one? Right here. Um, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When your faith is activated, you have hope. You believe, you believe that what you believe will happen. And you're so thoroughly convinced you're not even doubting. People say, well, you, you know, you've been talking about that for two years now. You say, yeah, but it's on the way. Amen. Amen. That's right. They, they can't talk you out of it because you're convinced about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's on the way, you know. I remember when God said I had a ministry, it took years to get here. 
God said I had a ministry and there was no ministry. I said, God said I'm a preacher. People said, well, what are you preaching? I said, well, you know, right now I just preach to the walls in the bathroom. I, you know, I use my brush as the mic. But one day I will have the mic because God said it was so. It was just a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before the things that you're hoping for begin to appear. Yes. But if you're constantly looking at the natural, you're looking at the lack and not at your abundance. That's why he said, don't look at the things which you're seeing. They're temporary. Mm -hmm. Look at the things which are unseen because the things which are unseen are eternal. God can bring more and he can bring more and he can bring more. That's what happens in the eternal realm. It's limitless. It's a limitless supply. There's no ending to it. That's why the men and women of God in the Old Testament were so wealthy because they had tapped into the eternal realm Mm -hmm. of limitlessness. Mm -hmm. God showed the men of faith a faith picture by having him look in the sky. He couldn't even count his blessings. God was saying, you see all those stars? That's how your seed's going to be. He couldn't even count them all. He was showing the man of faith a faith image, and he was saying, this is how it's going to manifest. Because faith has an endless supply. Faith is not capped. Faith is not capped. It's endless. Uh It continues even after you're gone. Right. Your children. I am the recipient of my grandmother's faith. All that rocking she did over there in that raggedy chair, praying and stuff, that raggedy chair with that rag on her head, all of that rock. I am the recipient of that rag on her head. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What's number four? Powerful. Number four was hope. And five. We haven't got to five yet. Some people just ahead of the game. They just running in faith. We still walking and taking baby steps. You done ran in faith. You over there leaping and like the man that was healed at the gate. Beautiful. The Bible said he was leaping and dancing and praising him. Slow down, Secretariat. We still just coming out the gate. All right. <laughs> Number five for Pastor Irma, satisfied. When your faith is activated, you are satisfied. How many of y'all just really want to live a life of satisfaction? Yeah. Where you are content. Paul said, I've learned yeah. to be content in whatsoever state I'm in. Yeah. He said, whether I'm hungry yeah. or I'm well fed, whether I have abundance or I'm like, he said, I've learned to abase and to abound. Abase means I know how to discipline myself in the times of meagerness. When the money is funny, I don't get funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, that was good. I almost ran yesterday. If I didn't have on these cheap silver shoes, I would have ran right there. I just went, oh, wait, I got on the silver shoes. And I'm going to run it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, that was powerful right there. When the money is funny, Paul says, I know how to live satisfied. I've learned to be good. I had to learn it, Angie. I had to learn it by faith. I, God let me go through some seasons where I didn't have nothing and my complaining didn't get it. I'm complaining about it. God, oh Lord, I've been praying about it. God said, no, you've been complaining about it. Prayer and complaining are two different kinds of uh, encounter with God. If you're going to God, God, I can't believe I'm still here. I still got these bills. I can't believe God. I still got this IRS debt. And God said, you're going to still have it until you get into some faith. Faith says it's done and I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm not going to continue to pray a dead prayer that God has already answered and I can't see the answer. Once you prayed it, You believe it, stand in it. God heard you. He didn't put the earplugs in in your prayer life. (laughs) Who's got Isaiah 58, 11? I do. All right, let's hear that. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and shall be like a watered garden Mm-hmm. Like a spring of water whose waters, whose waters fail not. Whose waters never fail. Amen. The Lord shall guide you continually. That's what Isaiah said. He shall satisfy you in drought. When you're in a dry season, when you're in a season where your money's funny, your friends are few. Because when the money gets funny, isn't it, fu- isn't it funny how the friends get few too? Yeah. Nobody's calling you to go to lunch because they know you. they got to pay, right? <laughs> right? When you're in those times of drought, God says, I will be your source. I will water you. I will make you like a well-watered garden. Yeah. And, and your water in your garden is, will be like a spring springing up where it's constantly watering.
water in your garden. That's in your dry season. You can trust God when things are not looking good. Whoa, choke. Somebody needed to hear that. You can trust God when things are not looking so good because you're in a faith walk. And if, it's, if things are not looking good, it's just a test, baby. It's just a test. You will pass this test if you keep walking by faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. The reason why some of you had to do retest, retake the test, is because you lost your faith in the middle of the test. You dropped the ball. I don't believe God. I'm going back to loaded bar. Then got back to Lodi Bar and re realized Lodi Bar is not that fun either. So yeah. I'm just going to go on up here and trust God. <laughs> then you go back through the test and you realize every time you pass a test, you go to another level. Yeah. You increase every time your spirit, your soul, your mind, your intellect, your revelation, your inspiration, knowledge increase every time you pass a test. Mm -hmm. You go to another level. Yep. Amen. That means your baby steps. Now I become bigger. Come on. Now you now you starting to stride. You're starting to walk with God. You know, some people, I saw a girl, she was walking in the mall one day, and she was walking. She had one of them high heel shoes and she was. <laughs> so, she walked. I mean, I like to walk. I was looking at her like, whoa. And I'm trying to walk like <laughs> so, I like her stride. I mean, and it seemed to be very natural. For me, it was unnatural because it was her stride. Right. Yeah. It was unnatural. See, I can't walk your walk. I want you to be satisfied. And when your faith is full and you're operating in faith, and when it's activated, you are satisfied. You're not looking at everybody else's blessing, complaining about yours. Oh, wow. Psalms 107, verse 9. This is for you, Gayla. English Standard Version, Psalms 107, verse 9. English Standard Version. For he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry soul he feels with good things. Somebody say good things for Gayla. Good things for Gayla. Come on, say it like you mean it. Good things for Gayla. He satisfies the hungry soul with good things. Amen. That which is good. All good and perfect gifts come from, from above. Ooh, I'm going to take that one for myself. Write that one down for me too. Number six, when faith is activated, there is a steadfastness. You're steadfast. That means you don't quit so easily. Because faith keeps you going. Who's got 1 Corinthians 15, 58? You got that one? All right. Come on, teacher. Read it like you're a teacher. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen. Here you go. Yes. Here's what Paul says. Be steadfast. When your faith is activated, you'll keep going when nobody else is. Uh -huh. Do you know I've had to keep going in ministry when I had two people? When I had two people, I had to keep going. When Judas came along and stabbed me in the back, I still had to keep going. I had a steadfastness in my heart because my faith saw the picture that God had for my life. Yeah. And it wouldn't let me quit. Yeah. And I had developed enough steadfastness to keep going even when it didn't look like what I saw in the spirit. Yeah. yeah. And then the last one, number seven, is you've got to be committed to your spiritual growth. Committed to your spiritual growth. Increasing your faith and trusting in God and becoming more and more of your God likeness. Come on, Mom, you're going to read that. Second Peter. Second Peter, chapter 1, verses. Three through eight. Second Peter one. Three two through eight. Here, somebody here. Would you pass this? Hey, pass this back to my mom. Second Peter, chapter one, verses three through eight. According to His divine power, hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of Him that hath called us to glory and virtue, 
whereby are given unto us exceeding exceeding great and precious promises, yes. that by these ah, ye might on. be partakers ah. of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world uh, through lust. Mm -hmm. Come on. And besides this, giving all diligence, give all add, diligence, add to your faith virtue. Mm -hmm. And to virgin knowledge, yes. and to knowledge temperance, yes. and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, mm -hmm. and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Mm -hmm. For these, for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful. In the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Here it is as we Amen. close. Here it is as we close. Thank you, Susan. Amen. As we close, here's what Peter the Apostle said. Peter was a radical faith believer. Peter was the one that got out of the boat yeah. and yeah. walked on the yeah. water. Uh -huh. Because when the Lord beckoned him to come, his yeah. faith said yes, yes. to him. Yeah. Peter was the one that the Lord said, feed my, lovest thou me, Peter, feed my sheep. Yeah. Peter was the one that on the day of Pentecost, boldly in faith, he stood up and preached the first sermon, the first apostolic sermon, and 3,000 souls was added to the church. I'm talking about that Peter, yeah. that Peter, full of faith. He was a man of faith, and here's what he said. He said, you've got to add to your faith. That means if you're adding, addition means increase. Right. Yes. Yeah, right. He's saying increase your faith. He says, here's how you do that. Giving all diligence. Mm -hmm. Being steadfast. Yeah. Being diligent. Mm -hmm. Continuing on. Mm -hmm. All throughout this year, starting this day, tomorrow, January 4th, my mother's birthday. Yes. My 26th AA birthday. Tomorrow I will be 26 years clean and sober. Yeah. That's weekends and holidays. Some people say weekends and holidays. Yeah, weekends and holidays. But it took faith to get here. The first day of my sobriety, I couldn't see 26 years but I could see 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. One day at a time. Yeah. 26 years. And God was so gracious that he planned my sobriety on my mother's birthday. <laughs> so tomorrow we both get a birthday. Yes. <laughs> Natural and spiritual. Yeah. 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 Amen. Amen. But I had to add to my faith. Mm -hmm. I had to believe God for sobriety because it was the toughest thing I had to do. He said, add to your faith virtue. And you do that by giving all diligence. Virtue is moral excellence. That means I don't do things behind closed doors that I wouldn't do in public. Right. I'm not one way behind closed doors and another way at church. Moral excellence. When you add to your faith, it keeps you. Faith keeps you. You got to add to it, moral excellence. God gives it to you, but it's yours to add. It didn't say God was going to add to it. It said you add to it. Uh -huh. It's your responsibility to activate your faith. God gives you all the activation tools. Will you use them? Starting this month, moral excellence, which is virtue. And to virtue, you add knowledge. Knowledge is the knowing of who God is and trusting him to be Lord. In May, to knowledge and self-control. In June and July, perseverance. In August, September, and October, godliness. In November, brotherly kindness. In December, increased faith. Yeah. <clears throat> that looks into your 2020. Yeah, These next yeah, two years, Yes. Are precedent. Yes, it is. What you do in this year of faith, mm -hmm. you'll see in the year of vision. The Lord said, Glenice, He said this big visions are built 
with little steps of faith. Big visions. Come on and stand as we pray. Big visions. Things are happening in this year because wherever there is faith, there's fruit. Wherever there's faith, there's fruit. Peter said, when you do these things, you will not be. Let me give it to you. When you do these things, you will not be barren nor unfruitful yeah. in the knowledge of Jesus, our Lord, and our Christ. He said, for if you do these things, you will abound. If you're adding to your faith, godliness, brotherly love, if you're showing love one to another, if you're virtuous, full of knowledge of God, your faith is going to increase. And faith is a substance of things hopeful. You're going to be fruitful in this year. This is a year where things are going to happen for you that you've been waiting for, that you've been praying for, you've been believing for. A month before this year ended, I saw double doors opening. And the Lord said, this is a year where access has been granted. Peter got access to walk on the water. It was granted to him. Your access is granted by your faith. Let's pray.